Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black Liliana's contract deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. We've featured a few too many playable decks recently, so now it's time to jank it up with the five mana enchantment, saying when it enters the battlefield we get to draw four cards and we lose four life. And at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control four or more demons with different names, we win the game. So the goal of the deck is to win with the alternate win condition of Liliana's contract. And in order to help us out, we did get some recent additions at two mana with Scourge of the Skyclaves, as well as Metallic Mimic, which can name demon, which will then be a demon in addition to its other types. So we did get some cheaper demons, which we didn't have before to make this game plan a little bit more realistic, but it's still going to be a struggle. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got some interaction with Fatal Push and Thoughtseize in an attempt to make the deck playable. At two mana, of course, Mindstone makes any deck better. And then we've got Metallic Mimic, naming Demon and giving future demons a plus one plus one counter, and Scourge of the Skyclaves, which is probably not going to get cast on turn two very often, because the opponent needs to be at less than 20 for the Scourge to survive, so we do need to get a little bit of damage in early. And then at three mana we've got a Baleful Amit from Amoncat Remastered, a 4-3 with a lifelink, and when it enters the battlefield we have to put a minus one minus one counter on target creature we control. Then we've got two copies of Embodiment of Agonies, a 0-0 demon with flying and death touch, which enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each different mana cost among non-land cards in our graveyard. So we don't want to play Embodiment with an empty graveyard, but in the late game it can potentially get a little bit larger, although most of the mana costs of cards that end up in our graveyard is going to be one, so that's not going to help our embodiment too much. Then at 4 mana, two copies of Spawn of Mayhem, which we can potentially play for 3 mana if we enabled Spectacle, and then we get a 4-4 Trampling Demon with Flying, and at the beginning of our upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals 1 damage to each player, and if we have 10 or less life, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Spawn of Mayhem as well. Then we've got two copies of Nightmare Shepherd, a 4-4 Flying Demon, that's also an enchantment creature, and whenever another non-token creature we control dies, we may exile it, and if we do create a token, that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 1-1, and it's a Nightmare in addition to its other types. Now there is a cool interaction between Nightmare Shepherd and Scourge of the Skyclaves. If we have a Nightmare Shepherd in play and a Scourge of the Skyclaves in hand, even if one of the players is at 20 or more life, we can still play Scourge of the Skyclaves. It's gonna die right away, but then it's gonna come back as a 1-1 Nightmare Demon, and that's gonna override the ability from Scourge of the Skyclaves, and we get to enable Revolt for Fatal Push at the same time. And then to offset the life loss from Liliana's contract and some of our demons, we're also playing the full playset of Tendrils of Corruption in the main deck. That's also the reason why we have so many swamps in the mana base. Deals X damage to target creature and we gain X life where X is the number of swamps we control at instant speed. Then at 5 mana, besides our full playset of Liliana's contract, we also have one copy of Doom Whisper, which can exchange our life total for Surveil 2, and then is a 6 6 Flying Trampler as well. And then topping off our curve at 6 mana, we've got two copies of Demon Lord Bells Unlock, a 6 6 Legendary Elder Demon with Flying and Trample, and when Bells Unlock enters the battlefield, exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a non land card, put that card into our hand, and if the converted mana cost is 4 or greater, we can repeat this process, and Bells Unlock deals 1 damage to us for each card put into our hand this way, so it can potentially provide quite a bit of card advantage as well. And then the mana base, 22 swamps to enable our Tendrils of Corruption alongside 3 copies of Cabal Stronghold, which we can tap alongside 3 mana, and then add a black to our mana pool for each basic swamp we control. So this is another incentive for us to play a lot of basic swamps, as this can potentially generate extra mana to help us empty our hand of all these expensive demons. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Kick things off with a Thoughtseize. And we're up against Goblins, so this is gonna be a very difficult matchup. Jump Palm kills my stuff, Krenko kills me, Chieftain kills me, Muxus kills me very hard. I guess they're stuck on two lands, so that's kind of the saving grace. So maybe I should take Jump Palm and try to mana screw them. Sadly, Mimic is not gonna get to attack here. As my opponent can make two tokens. Uh, 
at least second place Scourge. Which will be a 1-1 one -one here. Alright, they drew a War Chief. So next turn they can already play Krenko. Four mana spawn of mayhem. It's gonna be another war chief into Krenko instead. And next turn they can play Muxus. Alright, I mean we got three of the four demons. Sadly that's not enough. My best bet is to try and trade off and then Fatal push the War Chief so they can Muxus me, but even just playing Chieftain is already lethal, so we'll go out on our own terms and conditions. The sad part is that contract triggers on beginning of upkeep and not end step. So even if we got an extra turn, it would not be enough. We would need to survive an entire turn cycle afterwards. Opponent plays Ringleader instead of Muxus into Chieftain. And that's game. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand, Mindstone to ramp into turn 4 contract. Bit of early interaction with Fatal Push. Facing rogues, do we want to kill the Wind Robber? I think I gotta keep Fatal Push for a potential Thought Thief instead. Although opponent doesn't seem to have one. Alright, let's kill the Wind Robber then. And then... I guess we can Metallic Mimic first. And then now I want to play Mindstone so I can play Contract next turn. If my opponent has a Thought Thief now, I'll regret this attack, but they didn't have one turn two. Yeah, I still probably shouldn't risk it. Ah, they had a Cunning Knight Bonder instead. Which is gonna hit for two, we'll take it. I guess we want to Thought Seize before Contract to make sure the Contract resolves. So let's start there. It's gonna get countered. Could have waited one turn to make sure I had the mana to play both Contract and Thought Seize in the same turn. But that didn't say please, did mill over a few cards, so now my embodiment gets larger. And then the order here doesn't matter. Get a 4-4 embodiment. And a Tendrils of Corruption. Alright, so I think now I'm gonna attack with embodiment. End of turn, fire off. Tendrils of Corruption, and then if it gets countered, we can resolve Contract. We've got five Swamps in play, opponent passes. Can also sack Mind Stone here. Alright, gets convoluted. So should be able to resolve Contract now. And hit for four. Alright, and our opponent explodes. So, yeah, contract being a five mana draw four in a slow matchup is sometimes pretty good. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Facing Castle Embrith. If this is a burn deck, 
we could be in trouble. And yeah, sure looks like it. So... Interesting that they decided to play a tap lane turn one instead of a one drop. What are we taking is a question. They are a little far from casting Incinerator, but they can get there with the damage from Spitter, maybe followed by Skewer the Critics. Yeah, maybe I just take the Skewer as kind of the cheaper of the burn spells they have. And there's a Scorch Spitter, and they drew a Mountain. I guess we'll just play Mimic and then trade. If we get the chance. Next turn, Embodiment is going to be a 2-2 at least. So I want to trade for Lava Runner, so my Embodiment can block Spitter. Alright, so they wanted access to the blue mana, I guess, which is why they didn't play Pathway turn 1. The trade happens. And uh, I guess my embodiment is gonna get killed by a sling fire here, but then the next embodiment's gonna be a little bit larger. And next one we get to go Mindstone into Embodiment. Alright, they had a Lightning Strike as their last card that we didn't know about. So without Adamant, this only deals 3 damage. Still enough to kill my 3-3 three, three Embodiment. But sacrificing Mindstone is not gonna make it larger because it has the same mana cost as Metallic Mimic. So yeah. I think we're just gonna run this out and then trade for removal. Next turn we can draw with Mindstone. Alright, they did another Lightning Strike. Billful Amet could be useful, but it's just gonna get burnt here. Alright, Tendrils is nice, so that can take care of one of the Scorch Spitters. Ooh, Curiosity, I see, so that's why they're splashing blue. Well, good thing we drew removal here. With Curiosity, the Scorch Spitter would essentially draw two cards per turn. Thoughtseize can take their Sling Fire, and then we can play our Amets as a 3-2 lifelink. Play my land in case we draw Liliana's contract. My opponent is potentially one land away from playing the incinerator, so can't feel too safe about this. And I guess I can even play a kicked scourge, so let's think about this. I guess I want to play it before attacking. This is now a 10-10, and my opponent concedes. Alright, what an unusual game, and got to play my first kicked Scourge of the Skyclaves to good effect. So that was pretty interesting. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. Well, we've got both Fatal Push and Thoughtseize. If this is a Spirit Dancer deck, we've got some nice tools. So let's find out. And yep, sure looks like a Spirit Dancer deck to me. Take their only creature, and my opponent concedes. Well, that was easy. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Bit of removal, ramp into turn 3 Shepherd, turn 4 Contract. And a turn 1 Prospector. We can't seem to escape the Goblin deck. At least we've got removal for Prospector here. 
Thoughtseize, I think I'm gonna wait on that. Once we get closer to my opponent being able to cast Muxus. And yeah, we'll get a Shepherd in play. Then next turn, if I draw land, I might still play Contract. If I don't, we can Mindstone Thoughtseize. I did draw land. So they still can't Muxus me next turn. So I feel safe playing the Contract. Of course, Krenko is still going to be an issue, but now with Fatal Push, we can enable Revolt with Mindstone and then Fatal Push Krenko. Wily Goblin attacks, so if they have the Cycling Goblin, they could deal two before damage and then finish off my Nightmare Shepherd. So I'll take it. And a second Chieftain to play. Another Contract, we'll have to wait on that for a bit. For now, kick things off with uh, Thoughtseize. And they have double Moxus in hand. Yeah, that's gonna make it tough. Do I take one anyway? I can kill one of the Chieftains. And then... Yeah, I can play Mindstone. Sacrifice Mindstone. Fatal push Chieftain, but that's not going to help me too much. I guess I can even play an extra Mind Stone here. Alright, let's pass it back. I guess I'll wait on Fatal push. And they found a land, so they get to play Muxus. And I guess we'll wait to see what they get with Muxus here. Alright. They found plenty more goblins. So now they can cycle Gem Palm to kill my Shepherd as well. And the sad part about Prospector too is that if we ever did find the Tendrils of Corruption, my opponent could just sacrifice a Goblin that we're targeting in response to deny the life gain as the Tendrils would fizzle. So Shepard dies. I can kill one of the Chieftains, but it doesn't matter too much here. Alright, we're on the play with the Land Light Hand. It does have some interaction with Fatal Push. Yeah, pretty much need to draw lands for the rest of the game for this hand to be functional. Let's take a mulligan. Alright, I mean... It's very similar to the previous hand, but we swapped out a Fatal Push and a 6-drop for an extra land. And we'll get rid of Embodiment here. So we're underway, opponent on blue-white. Alright, so blue-white flyers deck. Well, luckily we've got a 4-4 flyer ourselves. If they attack, probably implies they have a combo trick like a Rally of Wings, so we probably will have to take it. Mystic Subduel, of all things. 
Well, I guess the shepherd no longer flies. That's a lot of mine stones, even for me. Can enable revolt for fatal push with it. Alright, so Stronghold can make extra mana. Play Mindstone. Opponent could be holding a Lofty Denial, potentially. So let's see, how do we want to sequence... I guess, Sack Mindstone to enable Revolts. Although then they can still a Lofty Denial. So I guess we'll just start by Fatal pushing the Watcher of the Spheres. And then if they Lofty Denial, I can just pay four. And then we'll play more Mind Stones. And if they tap out of blue mana, I could still technically kill the Eagle. I think I gotta take two. Alright. Some tap. How much mana do I have? I guess we can play Demon Lord. They could have double Lofty Denial, I suppose. But they don't. Alright. Now, does Dust still count as a demon for contract purposes? So we'll hit for two. And play embodiments. Another eagle. Opponent passes, we'll untap. Make extra mana. Play contracts. And we're going for an alternate win condition here. That's for sure. So play Amits. Put counter on Shepherd. And then I guess we'll go for Mindstone to enable revolts. And pass a turn. Let's see if we can finally win with contract. Our opponent forgot to read the fine print. No, glass casket. Alright. That's okay, we've got more demons in hand. Make it two. Alright. So, I could contract to go down to one. Spawn of Mayhem would trigger on upkeep, but the contract would win the game before that happens. Uh, probably hang on to my Mind Stone, since I'm about to draw a bunch of cards. And yeah, playing double Spawn of Mayhem doesn't do it, since we need different demons. So, yeah, I think I'm going for it. Go down to one. Alright, Tendrils can gain me a bunch of life back. And we'll have a look with Thoughtseize. Ah, and my opponent concedes. That's too bad. We had four demons in play, we had Contract. But yeah, it happens on upkeep and not end step, so we gotta wait an entire turn, and my opponent had two removal spells. But we were probably gonna win this game with damage, if not with the alternate win condition. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with pretty mediocre hands. Um, but I guess we'll try it. Opponent on Kathis combo. We'll take Kathis. Oh, 
Uh oh. An early excavator means they'll be able to escape Uro easily and fill the graveyard. Although Mindstone was a nice draw. You get to play Contract next turn. So next turn we'll see an escaped Uro. They could float mana with Mox Amber while Uro is still in play here. And that's what they'll do. Sir so opponent is looking for a copy of Kethys to get access to their graveyard. We get to draw four. And Fatal Push could potentially help us interact. Gonna be a Jace Wielder of Mysteries. Mills for two. Opponent's probably gonna mill themselves with Jace. If they milled me, we could potentially get a bigger embodiment of Agonies. And Lazaf, so Lazaf can turn into Kethys, which would let my opponent combo off next turn, so we're gonna have to fatal push Lazaf. Another contract. So my stronghold still doesn't generate extra mana, but it will next turn. So for now, probably go Fatal Push plus Nightmare Shepherd. Maybe they've got an Ursa's Runus Blast, which is why they attacked, and they did. So that exiles all my stuff. Alright, let's draw some more cards. And play Mimic. So, got three demons between the battlefield and our hand. Tendrils is a bit of interaction, but... Opponent's probably pretty close to comboing off. They've got 22 cards in Graveyard. They can escape Uro here. And even if we kill Uro with Tendrils, they can escape it next turn once again. It's gonna be Lazav, which can turn into Kethys. Although they also need Diligent Excavator in play to be able to consistently keep comboing. So... We'll see what happens here. No copies of Mox Amber in the graveyard either. Alright, Thoughtseize could be useful. So let's kick things off with Thoughtsies. Excavator Ruinous Blast. Yeah, I guess we let them keep the Excavator. Take away the Ruinous Blast. They're both definitely problematic. And then I have to Tendrils Lazav. And we get to play a small embodiment. 
which gets a counter from Metallic Mimic as well. Jace pretty close to ultimating as well. Probably gonna take a hit from Uro here. If I trade, they get to escape again. Still block my Mimic and then Jace gets the ultimate. So we need the pressure here. And an Ashok. It's gonna help them mill more cards. And make my future embodiments worse as well. Well, they milled all their copies of Kethys. So now they need Lazav to get access to it. For now... I guess we attack Jace. Play Demon Lord. So we're very close to winning with Contract here, actually. Can play Amit. I'll put the counter on Amit itself. And hit Jace. No one and then Bells and Log blocks Uro. And on our upkeep we would win. So if they don't find a Lazav, we might get there. Another Runus Blast would also ruin our day. Another Uro, so they get to draw some more cards. I guess they can just win with the alternate win condition from Jace now. By just having an empty library. Yeah, I think they'll have just enough, as long as they tap their mana correctly, because they get to escape two Uros. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I guess they hadn't uh, activated Jace yet. So yeah, Jace alternate win condition here. Wins the game before contract, and yeah, once again, we had four demons in play with different names, but we gotta wait until our upkeep, which, yeah, just makes this deck a little bit too janky. Even if you manage to jump through all those hoops. So, I don't recommend building the deck, that's for sure. There are other ways to potentially win with Liliana's contract, including versions with Arcane Adaptation to change all your creature types into Demon, or you could build a deck that's an Omniscience combo deck that has access to Mastermind's Acquisition that lets you search up a whole bunch of cards out of the sideboard, including maybe four different Demons, a Liliana's contract, and maybe a way to take an extra turn so you don't have to wait until your upkeep, but at that point it's more of an Omniscience deck and less of a Liliana's contract deck. So I tried to keep it thematic for this build, but as you could see it's very difficult to win with the alternate win condition, and most of the time if you have four demons in play you could just win with damage instead. So yeah, not the best deck out there, but at least we gave it a shot. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.